Mass contributions as thanksgiving by S. Chidambaram and family. Mass intentions as thanksgiving by Sean Suarez for the gift of life. For the Lord's mercy, protection, and blessings on the whole world by Shiny Anthony. For the soul of Miss Sheila Fatima by Ajay Kumar Cyril and family. Birth remembrance of the soul of Melrose Daniel by Pravina Vinod and family. For the soul of Janet by Rajesh and Ivan. For the soul of Anthony D'Souza by Angelina D'Souza. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today the church celebrates the memorial of St. Francis of Assisi. One of the great hymns of St. Francis of Assisi is Make me an instrument of your peace. Lord, make me an instrument. This morning, we need to ask the Lord to be his instrument. Whether we are broken, whether we're able to spread the tune from our instrument of life, when there is the master's touch, the instrument is always played well. This morning, let us ask the master's touch, the touch of Jesus, so that we, who are the instruments of God, may play well our role in this world to bring peace and also to live a life of happiness. That was the goal of St. Francis of Assisi, to live a life of happiness, a happiness which comes from God. This morning, let us seek God's help and his touch in this Eucharist and offer ourselves our weaknesses, our failures, our sinfulness in the presence of God. Seeking for God's mercy and grace, let's together confess. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and, and to, to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all, all the angels and saints, and, and to my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
St. Francis was conformed to Christ in poverty and humility. Grant that by walking in Francis' footsteps, we may follow your Son, and through joyful charity come to be united with you. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The beginning of the book of the prophet Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But John arose to flee to Tarsus from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarsus. So he paid the fare and went on board to go with them to Tarsus, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God, and they threw the waves that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it from them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call upon your God. Perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we do not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation? And from where do you come? What is your country? And of what people are you? And he said to them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were ex existingly afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you, that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Take me up and throw me down into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you, for I know it is because of me 
that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not. For the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried to the Lord, We beg you, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not on us innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done as it has pleased you. So they took up Jonah and threw him into the sea. And the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. And the Lord spoke to the fish. And it vomited up Jonah out upon the dry land. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You brought up my life from the pit, O Lord. You, you brought, brought up, up my life from, from the pit, pit o, o Lord. Lord. I called to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. You brought up from my life from the pit, O Lord. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood was round about me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. You brought up my life from the pit, O Lord. Then I said, I am I am cast out from your presence. How shall I again look upon your holy temple? You brought, you brought up, up my life, life from the pit, pit, O Lord. Lord. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. You, you brought, brought out my life, life from the pit, pit O Lord. O Lord. the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all the same shall be added unto you. Alleluia. A new commandment I give to you, says the Lord that you will love one another even as I have loved you. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, behold, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbors as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered right. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, 
who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine. Then he set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him. And whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved neighbor to that man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed mercy on him. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, this morning I invite you to reflect with me on today's reading, the gospel, and the life of today's saint, St. Francis of Assisi. I'm going to present in this very reflection three points which we can really reflect upon and also carry with us for our life. I want to begin with the life of St. Francis of Assisi. My dear brothers and sisters, St. Francis of Assisi had a vision of the crucified Lord. And in that vision, the Lord spoke to St. Francis of Assisi saying, Go and rebuild my church, which is ruined. Go rebuild my home. Go rebuild my house, which is ruined. The moment St. Francis of Assisi had this vision, he really did not know how to really start to repair the house of God. The house of God. And immediately on his way, he meets a person. He encounters a person. And when he encountered a person, the person just came and embraced him. And embraced him. And that very person was St. Dominic. And he said, the vision that you had of Christ to rebuild his house is the same vision I had. And it is the spirit that moved me towards you to be your companion, to build the house of God. St. Francis of Assisi had different people also who joined with him to be his companions, but they were not of the vision to rebuild the church. So St. Francis of Assisi kept these very groups and companions far away. So the lesson that we need to learn in the life of St. Francis of Assisi is be with people who has your vision, who can collaborate with your vision like St. Dominic. Be with people who have the same dream of yours. Be with people who can visualize what you really visualize in your life. Be with them. 
not with companions who just want to be with you but do not have your vision. Be with people with who you have your own visions. The first lesson is be with people who has vision like yours and also who can collaborate and cooperate with your vision and dream. The second thing we need to learn is from today's first reading taken from the prophet Jonah. Today we have a beautiful scene where God says Jonah to go to Nineveh. But he runs away from the presence of God and he pays a price and he gets into a boat. He gets into a boat. And when the ship is on its voyage, suddenly we find the, the tussles of the sea happening. Great waves being hidden on the ship. And immediately the people in that ship cry towards God, cry for help to God. And there's a beautiful scene that we focus that people were thinking there is something heavy in that boat. And they begin to keep throwing out things from their boat to lighten their boat. But yet, after throwing everything into the sea, yet they find there is something heavy in that boat, which is the cause of this tempest wave. And when they find Jonah right deep at the boat, they wake him up, and they bring him out, and they ask him who you are, from where you are, what is your purpose in this boat? There are several questions where they ask, who you are, where are you going, from where are you coming from, what is your purpose? In the moment when Jonah describes, they say, you are the cause for this big tempest to happen. And they throw Jonah out of that ship. My dear brothers and sisters, a lesson to be learned, second lesson. In our lives, is like a ship. We carry many things loaded in our life. At a certain point of time, we keep throwing things out of our lives, thinking that these are the things which lighten our life. But you know, at the depth, at the depth of your heart, there are few people who have got into your life. There are few people who have got into your life. And because of those few people who have got into your life, life has turned out to become very miserable. And your life is like in a tussle. You really do not know how to control your life because of these few people who bring heaviness in your boat. You need to ask, why have they come into my life? What is the reason for their purpose? When did they come and what are they doing in my life? And you find that they are the cause of your boat to be heavy. Throw them out. Throw them out. Keeping them in, it is you who are going to sink and are going to be falling down. So the second lesson is to throw out people who are bringing heaviness in your life. It is hard. The people cried, Lord, forgive us if we are, we are the cause for this innocent man's death. They cried. They offered to the Lord, but they threw Jonah out of the boat. God knows how to take care of them, but you need to take care of yourself because there are some people who bring heaviness in your heart, heaviness in your life, who have just caused so much misery and pain that you are about to sink. So the first lesson from Francis of Assisi is be with people who have your own visions. Second, from the life of Jonah, throw out people who bring misery and heaviness in your life. And third is from today's gospel, the story of the Good Samaritan. What makes him to be called good? What makes this Samaritan to be called good. I would just point out one phrase from today's gospel. This man, the good Samaritan, when he placed the wounded man on himself, he brought to a place where he 
he could be taken care of. Where he could be taken care of. Where he was paid attention towards. So have people in your life who pay attention to you when you are in pain. Have people who can console you, who can throw you on their shoulder in the moments of your struggle. Have people who can say, I can take care of you. I care for you. I'm there for you. Bring those people into your life. Have them with you who can immediately, instantly cater to you whenever you are wounded or you are lying in wound. The words of the Good Samaritan is, take care of him. Take care of him. I will come back and pay warm how much ever it costs for him. Take care of him. Is there anybody in our life who could say, I care for you. I can take care of you. Have such people in life who can pay close attention to you. So three different people. Be with people who have your own visions. Throw out people who bring heaviness in your life and have people who can say, I care for you. These are the few things that we could reflect upon today and carry with us as we journey this day with the Lord. Amen. sisters that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good, good and good of our holy, holy church. As we bring you these offerings O Lord we pray that we may be rightly disposed for the celebration of the mystery of the cross which Saint Francis so ardently embraced through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, for, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of the mortal being with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of all angels adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voice, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Your 
glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord God of hosts. Blessed who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to your elders worthy in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, her Holy Spouse, St. Joseph, St. Padre Pio, St. Faustina, St. Mother Teresa, St. Francis of Assisi, and all the blessed saints, we have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Formed by divine teaching, let us now dare to pray in the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles and my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus says to each one of us, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, who take away the sins Sin of, the of the world, world have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who have been called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have done on my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, please come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you now as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. A prayer to St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us to show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. <laughs> Well, let me bring your love Where there is injury or pardon, Lord Where there is the true faith in you O Master, grant that I may never see to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love and all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. Darkness only light Where the sadness ever joy Let us pray Grant we pray, O Lord Through these holy gifts which we have received 
that imitating the charity and the apostolic zeal of St. Francis, we may experience the effects of your love and spread them everywhere for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I take this blessed moment to wish all the Franciscan brothers, sisters, and priests a very happy feast to the different orders and all those who hold the name of St. Francis and also who carry the apostolic zeal of St. Francis, a happy feast. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Come up, the night is behind. Go down in the city into the street, and let's give the message to the people we meet. So light up the fire, let the flame burn. Open the door, let Jesus return. Take seats of His Spirit, let the fruit grow. Tell the people of Jesus, let His love show.